and the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worm destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing away. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And the wicked, even mine enemies, my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled at flesh. Though an host should attempt against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing that I desire the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in the city of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me up on a rock. Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. For what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, we shall be called sons of God. Does not yet appear what we shall be, but we do know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as Heaven, sounding sweet.
mantle for every situation and mountain of our God. We love him and we appreciate him today. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. God bless you this morning. We want to welcome you to Bethel Church and thank you for coming, so many of you, to share in this service of celebration of the life and legacy of our dear mother, Gwendolyn Gloria Lumsden. What a beautiful gift from God to us. And we have come today to celebrate her life, to give God praise. She is not here. She is now in the presence of Almighty God. And we have come to give God thanks. While you're here, your health and safety is of the utmost importance to us. We want you to know in the case of any kind of emergency that we will make our way to the doors that you probably walked into. Follow the green men on top of the doors and we will leave in an expedited fashion. Our ushers are here to serve you. Restroom facilities are to the rear of the church. If you need any help and assistance while you're here, the ushers are ready, willing, and able to serve you. Mother Gwen was a worshiper. She loved the Lord and she loved this church. And we are not here to funeralize her today because we don't have funerals for the saints. We have homegoing services services of celebration so i want as many of you that can even if you're a little uncomfortable but this is how we do it here let's clap our hands and give god a mighty hand
we will be led in prayer by Pastor Annette Davis, followed by Pastor George Burrow, with the reading of the Old Testament scripture, followed by Minister Sharon Miller in that order, please. Pastor Annette Davis, Pastor George Burrell, Minister Sharon Miller. I will be reading from Psalm number 91, from verse 1 to verse 7. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the horror that fight by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. This is the word of the Lord, and it is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord and good morning. Our second reading is taken from Saint John 14, from verse 1 to 6, and I shall read in your hearing. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? You're in the of God's holy word. The word of the Lord is blessed. Some years ago, I was having a conversation with and when we were just talking about how she came to start attending this church. And she said that one of the things that she loved when she came here, which would have been over close to 40 years ago, was the choir. She absolutely loved, even as she was visiting those days, uh, 
missionary Una Barkley, Mother Townsend, and Mother Cardi were all choir members. And so the bishop's choir is coming. We're going to celebrate the fact that Mother Gwen loved to hear the choir. We're going to sing Stairway to Heaven. She's on the stairway. Amen. And when the Lord opened that door for her on January the 5th, she stepped right in. She made her way into the presence of God. We're going to put smiles on our faces. Where Gwen is right now, she's smiling. She's happy because she has made it in to be with the Lord. God bless you, choir, as you come. I'm on the stairway tonight.
what to do when you come to church. If you were at the pump, nobody would have to tell you what to do. If you were at the butcher, nobody would tell you what to do. I want you to just wait for the person next to you. Tell them you're in church. Tell them you're in church. Nobody's gonna look at you funny if you clap your hands. Nobody's gonna talk about you if you sing. For some of us, this might be our only visit this year. So make the best of it. Somebody say hallelujah in this church. We're giving God the glory and we're praising him. Mother Gwen was a praiser. She loved her Lord and she loved her church. And this is the last thing we're going to do for her. Is to send her, celebrate her life, and to give God the glory. We are going to begin now a series of tributes that are coming first from the community. We're asking you for the sake of time for you to please limit yourself to the time that's available. Amen. If you go over time, there will be a penalty. 17 pounds and 19 pence it will be your penalty for going over the two minutes to do. You take cash or credit, anyway. First coming, three of the stalwarts of this community who loved Mother Gwen, they're coming. We're going to ask you to come, please, and stand here. First, Miss Geraldine Willigan is coming, Mrs. Barbara Dettering, and Mrs. Hazel Stewart. We're going to ask you to come. Amen. These are women who love Mother Gwen and are familiar to us here in our church. We thank the Lord for them. Amen. Is Miss Willingham here? Right here. Thank you. I stayed with you at number seven Cottrell Road. Thank you for treating me as one of your own in this humble abode. I remember the first night you asked my lively spoken, girl, are you really going to sleep with your door wide open? No secrets between me and you, Miss Gwen, I replied. In which you smiled and wished me a good night. Good night, Mrs. Open Door, you chiked for the wall. Night, Mrs. Locked Door, I replied to hear you then chuckle down the hall. I'll miss popping the kettle on to make you your morning cup of Sarah say watching and debating the events of old Jeremy on TV. You drop a wise group to start my day, something like you shouldn't spare the rod to spoil the child, perhaps you'd say. I'll miss the morning chit-chat whilst we sat together in the living room drinking tea. And even early morning knocks on my door and you'd call out, Gigi. I'd roll around and crease, annoyed at my early morning awake. But when I'd see your little face through the door, smiling at me straight away, my anger would break. Tea when I'd shout, even though I'd know the reply. I miss running down Stephen Road to grab some supplies. I miss the comfort of your prayer whilst my hand you would hold. You were such a special kind of spirit, you could bring warmth to the most bit of all. For hours we would watch, sit and chat, or watching soaps on TV. Sometimes through the early hours, we would talk to me from those ways. Oh, I'd cry laughing, watching first dates, and smile over a couple in their 70s, sharing a meal, looking for love. I remember I looked around and turned to you to see an image of only disgust. I'd ask, don't you think that's sweet? 70 something and still hoping that love they'd meet. You look at me, the TV, and toward me again, wave a hand. The women can't even hold a fork. What's she gonna do with her mouth? <laughs> you'd finish your food, I'd joke. If you wanted to lick your plate, I'll lick you in a minute. <laughs> the time she threatened to beat me in jest for playing with my hair. I'd ask you a question, please to apply. I does not know, I does not care. I see, says the blind man, you would say at comments I would make, and how your face would light up as I offered you pineapple or mango on the plate. I'll miss your expressions as we watch the cookery shows, you'd gasp with the thought the food unwashed and turn up your nose. I'll miss the sunny evenings, we'd walk arm in arm through Eastwood Park, we'd sit on a bench and watch passerbys, and I'd die laughing from your remarks. 
When a young boy ran past, you go, my man, you did rat. I'd ask, do you know him? And if I do, do be sure to say hello to those who could pass on your way up. As they could be the same person who passed on your way down, you went to the floor from hand in hand. The time we'd watch the floods on the news, you'd rejoice, shouting, praise the Lord, leaving me confused. I'd ask why their house had been really had no money in the bank. You'd laugh and see my house is dry, and put it somewhere to find The first time I accompanied you to church, had to be the last. I went downstairs to put on my heels, only to gasp. It's when I've only got trained with my own It's the first day I go to church or service. Here, put these on as you pass me your shoes, which didn't go with my outfit, which made me a bit nervous. <laughs> your face, when I showed you what I was wearing, lit up so brightly, I thought, I'll take a hit and feel uncomfortable, just as you smile so brightly. You go, girl, you'd cry out, just as we were about to leave. There's energy and spirit, I'm just grateful I was lucky enough to receive. Mature in years, wise in the most, with a childlike spirit and heart of God. The food was tremendous, naughty but nice. The times I'd come home, I think I was is over the big up in my thighs. From your mackerel, your barbecue wings, chicken soup, planting in the morning. And one thing for sure, the was certainly you were around the kitchen. And on this trips, I'll see you on the trip, I'll save it all the way, on the 24 or over Tesco's, bickering down the aisle over whether you really need a half or what you chose. I miss you already, and I'll miss you more, if that I'm sure. However, I'm grateful for the memories for those that I do. Until I can no longer listen to the song, Move Like Ravens, without thinking of you. These times we had, we had a whole of dear, the laughs we had, that brought it here. Well, the day Jake said I was missing the open door and he was his lot. It was time for a lot to be lifted and for you to go. The way it above is a place for you to rest. Since you'll never be, for, be forgotten, we'll pledge a special hollow place within our hearts. That's where you always stay. Rest in peace, eternal peace, my beloved friend. <laughs> Thank you. 
morning. So mom's had to stay at home with him. But I'm here. My family is here. Because we have to be here. I'm reading this on behalf of my mom. Gwendolyn Lumsden. I called her my sister. I met her back in the early 1970s. The late Daphne Daniels introduced us, and from then on, our friendship grew stronger and stronger. Her children, Sonia, Barbara, and Carol, became my children, and vice versa. They slept at my house, and we slept at their house when necessary. We lived as one family. We went abroad together, and she and I even travelled to my son's house in Canada together. We would go on coach trips, taking Carol and Jackie with us to Huddersfield or wherever domino matches were playing. After the men finished playing, then the dancing would start. She was so funny. She loved to laugh and enjoyed making everyone around her laugh. She would come to the house and Albert, my husband, would be trying to sleep. But she would walk in the house and lovingly play with his beard and say out loud, Albert, wake up, Medea. His reply would be, woman, go away and leave me alone. She would continue to trouble him with affectionate pokes and tickles till he woke up. Then there'd be hours of laughs and debates. Unfortunately, Albert can't be here today due to his ill health. But I know if he could have made it, he would have. He said whilst he was in the hospital, I really want to be at Mrs. L's funeral. I need to be there, even if I'm just sitting there, pushing up my face, I need to be there. But his health has deteriorated since then. Gwen loved to cook. It was never a problem for her to cook big pots of food and invite us over for dinner. When my children who lived abroad and in London came to Bristol, they would always spend some quality time with her at Cottrell Road and were guaranteed some tasty food and lots of laughter. If I was going away for the weekend, I could guarantee that Gwen would feed Albert. Sometimes I'd come back and he'd look fatter than when I was. <laughs> Gwen was married briefly to my cousin Gladstone. My daughter Jennifer, who unfortunately can't be here, was a bridesmaid. She was a second mother to my children and a grandmother to my grandchildren. I shall miss her so much. Mrs. L, as I sometimes called her. Would often pop across to my house. And if I wasn't there, I'd find a dead leaf or a twig push through the letterbox <laughs> and sign to say she'd been. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to cope over the coming months. Late at night, every night we would call one another. It was normally around 11 p.m., 11.30ish, that my phone would go. Sometimes I'd be just falling asleep, but I'd look forward to our talks. We would put the world to rights, share our love of Jesus, and laugh out loud for hours. She always had a funny story to tell. <coughs> My daughter Jackie would call me, and if my phone was engaged, she would call Miss Gwen. And if her phone was engaged, she'd know that we were talking, and there was no point in trying to call again till the morning. We would often go on shopping trips to Bedminster, or down Broadmead, or anywhere else our bus pass could take us. Two old ladies with our walking sticks, travelling the shops, having lunch, and doing what women do. Gwen? My dear sister and beloved friend, may your soul rest in peace. And to the rest of the family, I love you and I'm here for you. You know where, my, where I live and my door is always open. I'll see you, my dear sister. Good night. Thank you so much. It is often in these moments that sometimes you're in these occasions and you're trying to find good things to say. But for this woman, it's not hard. She was indeed that good soul 
that beautiful spirit that we loved and we thank you for those tributes and more will come. We are blessed today to have pastors who have taken time to be with us. Some were here on Wednesday night for the uh, service of memory and we're delighted that they were here that they and able to share. I'm going to call at this time uh, Overseer Lance Dental, who serves as the overseer for the churches here in the Southwestern District which Mother Gwen was an active member and part of, followed by Bishop Raymond Vieira, pastor of the House of Prayer Church here, amen, in Bristol. And then we're gonna ask um, Pastor Greg Davis to come in that order, please. Overseer Lance Dino, Bishop Ray Vieira, Pastor Greg Davis. Praise the Lord, church, and God bless you, and we welcome, we thank God for everybody good day. Amen. Um, this is indeed an honor for me to stand to express um, my heartfelt thanks to God for a wonderful woman of God. Uh, sincere condolences to the family, Carol, Sonia, Barbara, the rest of the family. Uh, difficult time, we know. We're praying for you. Mother Gwen was a wonderful woman of God, a wonderful woman of God who impacted our life greatly uh, in a positive way. Um, there are many adjectives we could use, descriptive words. She was nice, she was generous, kind, um, but she could relate to people, uh, the type of person who we always felt good in her presence. We honor her today. We thank God for her. Uh, she was a blessing to me and my family. Uh, I remember days when she was with me when I was at low points in my life. And I thank God for her today. What a wonderful woman of God. Mother Gwen was just nice. Just nice. You know, uh, she taught me how to cook curry chicken. And I got good results, good feedback. And that was all down to Mother Gwen. Truly today, she was a, a great contributor to the church, great contributor to the Southwestern District. She went on the mission field. She gave her time for God. And now, amen, she's gone to a better place. Today, we honor her legacy. We give thanks for her memory. May her soul rest in peace in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. To um, Bishop Dexter, bishops and ministers, and indeed the bereaved family, um, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please accept my deepest sincere condolences at the loss of a great woman of God. But I want to leave you with a, a thought today. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on Im immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? As a believer in Christ, we know that death is not the end. The Bible says she's asleep, mother is asleep. And if you sleep, you will one day wake up. But we will wake up in glory, amen? The Bible says we're not people without hope. But we celebrate the life of our dear mother. And I pray that the family will understand that though it's difficult, she is with the Lord her Savior. And take comfort in that, that we have not lost her, but she's just waiting for us. The Bible says, and when the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall arise, this mortal shall have put on immortality. We shall be transformed. So may God bless you, may God cover you with his love, and strengthen you in this very difficult time. Blessings. Hallelujah. God is 
worthy to be praised. He really is worthy. I knew Sonia. Yes, he don't remember me. <laughs> Many years ago, and Barbara, that was back in the dance hall. <laughs> that was a dance hall days. I knew Carol, not in the dance hall days. <laughs> but God is still good. And I, you know, when the bishop and, you know, we give God thanks to all God's wonderful people, bishop, pastors, ministers, everybody. You know, bishop said, would you like to I said, of course I have to say something for Mother Gwen. Could never leave Mother Gwen's presence without laughing. She was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. I remember I was at Kingston Airport and I just happened to buck up on Mother Gwen and she said, you young and strong. <laughs> Carry this little box from here. <laughs> and I me pick up the box. I said, but we. It almost broke my I said, Mother Gwen, what you got in this box? She said, oh man, just a few little manga. <laughs> anyway, she was indeed a truly wonderful, wonderful person. And you know, condolences to the family. And, and God is good. Because the thought came to me is not how you die or when you die hallelujah but it's to make sure you know where you're going and when you know where you're going you have no worries so god took her god took her and you just have to read the bible to find out that many of them died in tragic ways but they're with the Lord. And so we give God thanks for Mother Gwen and for the, a great, wonderful, beautiful life. And to all the family and friends, God bless you and God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, trying his hearts to shine. Now rejoice in heaven, people, and the sunshine rises. And the sun that should be coming in the night. All of us singing, all of us shouting, I can't help it, only when we are. Oh, 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 o
is so good. God is so good. He's wonderful. And we praise him today because that's all we have. Praise is going to help us through this. Some people reach for medicine, we reach for praise. So the psalmist David said, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all time. His praise shall continue to be in my name. What a joy. What a joy. I feel a praise right here in this room. I feel a praise in this room. I feel a praise rising up in this room. The source of my strength. Program, Lord. 
ones who knew this wonderful lady, right? And I do count this a privilege. Thanking God for the precious moments and the times that I was able to spend with mom. Many people would know that she called me her son and nobody could dispute that. When we were out on the streets and anybody that we came across that we met, this is my son. And she was so, so proud to introduce me as her son. And it really was a privilege and an honor to be able to be called her son. And I'm just so glad to have her as my second mother. I've known her mum and um, the family for a long time. It's not just us, she when she came to church. We actually lived on the same street, on Walton Street. And you, the family, we lost touch, but you know, we all we got back together again through church and through mom. And, you know, there is, there, there's just so, too much to talk about, there really is. We all know that she's a wonderful lady, I mean, I think years ago, back in the 80s, early 80s, 81 I think, that I actually wheeled her, I was working at Friendship, and she was having an operation, and I wheeled her to theater, well that was my job at the time, and. 
you know, it was just nice. She, she you know, even led there on, on that trolley as I will do. We were talking and having fun and just, just seeing that wonderful smile on her face. And I think that's a thing that I'm going to remember so much about her is that, that smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, she always had a welcoming smile on her face. And she was uh, not just the smile, but she welcomed you in her heart. You know, she called me her son. She was my mom. And, there was, you know, my children, they were her dad was grandma. You know, it was, there was no barriers. We were, we, were in, we were engrafted in to the family. And we became one with them. And I just thank God for the, 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 the time that I've been able to spend with her, laugh with her. She was gave good counsel, you know, in, in, in bringing up my children. And more importantly, for God. She gave good counsel and good encouragement when it came to our spiritual walk with the Lord. And I just thank God that I had this wonderful lady, this wonderful mother uh, in my life. And I think we should count it a privilege that we all knew her. Mm -hmm. And she has all touched us mm -hmm. in some way. And I think it's our duty, it's my duty now, you know, to carry on this walk. She was walking with the Lord. You know, she, it, was, it wasn't a case where she was sick and she had time to repent. She had repented. She had her relationship with God. And it came to the time when she didn't know None of us knew, but God took her at that split second. But she was ready. Amen. Family and friends, let this not be another death that we just accept as another passing. Let this be a time when we can reflect on our own lives, on our own relationship. Amen. Mom walked with God. Amen. Will you do the same? She's in a good place. We need to follow the example that she has left us and follow Christ as she followed him. God bless you all. God strengthen you all. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Good morning, Chair. Good morning. 
Um, on behalf of my cousins and my family, I'd like to thank everybody that's here today and everyone who's come to the house and just shown us loads of love and support. Um, it wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been able to get through this without all of you. Um, so, I just want to say that a lot of, anybody who knows me knows that I'm not my close. She left all of her grandchildren. Whether she saw them or not, she still pick up the phone. Even if she knows you're not gonna answer, she leave a message. And even now when I go home, if the answer machine is flashing, it just, my heart skips a beat. I wasn't ready for this, but I know that um, in the days leading up to my man's passing, and she was really happy. I feel, I feel like it's important for people to know that because she was a really happy person, a really happy soul. My earliest memories of her is um, she always walked with something for you. Whether it was a plant, a pull a cake, a bun, a dumpling, whatever it was, she always walked from the time I'm little till now. Um, she always walk and bring something for you. And I always tell people about the hundreds of cups she had in her cupboard. And I asked her one day why she got so much cups. And she said, you never know what might happen. One day I might need to, so with my app and have people come here and I have to serve them. And she, that's the kind of person that she was. She was always thinking about other people and other people's needs, and no matter how small, she always walked with something for you. And I will always remember that about her. I think nuns are precious, and for everyone who still has their money in their life, please treasure them. Please treasure them. You know, the nun's the only person, I was thinking this morning, the only person who, no matter how old you get, she can still send you shop. <laughs> <laughs> and you still have to go. <laughs> Um, when she said you, she expected you to come back with what she said before. And you can't be sent for, you know, for butter beans and come back with candle beans. <laughs> you, could, you might pass that with your mum, but not with your man, because she's not happy. But when, for everybody who I've heard that tributes have talked about, her food, and she used her food to bring people together. And that's why that was important to her. Um, she was a really special lady. And I am also privileged to have grown closer to her as I've got older and to appreciate her more, not just as my man, but as a woman. And I mean, I gonna miss her dearly. And to all the grandchildren, you know, um, Nanny left all of us the same. So thank you, everyone.
like to say thank you all for coming today. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. And all anyway, everybody was talking about my mom's cooking and everything, and God bless her, she gave me. I took over from my mom. She taught me. <laughs> so that means everybody make an appointment. <laughs> um, I love mom so much, so so much, and I just pray. I well. I've been starting to go to church for the last eight months. And um, just before mom passed, um, I explained to her that I've now started to go to church. She wasn't very happy at first because I told her it's not Bethel Church. <laughs> and praise God it gave me the strength and my mom identify her I love her so much and I'm, I know a lot of people's like oh your mom's you know you're the one she's worried about she you're the one she's worried about but God she's gave me the strength I don't know how I've done it yeah. you know I really don't know how I've done it but I will carry on going on with the church. And also, I just love my two sisters, Sonia and Carol. Love you dearly. Start getting together close. Go out for lunch. <laughs> I'm teeth not to eat yogurt. <laughs> surely made it down to my wedding. And the fondest memory I have of her was not even that, was when I was so young in Portland, St. Marcus Bay, everybody know that area, crossroad those areas. Um, she had two other sibling sisters, Sadie and Muriel, which is my mom. And when they sit on the veranda and they talk, you, they finish each other's sentences so easily, you think they're triplets. And that's my fondest memory of her. She used to come, when she came to my home, my wife would love her dearly. Everywhere she goes, she would sit by the pool with my wife and the kids and just talk and talk and talk. And I've never, ever seen my aunt so happy to be in my presence. And I just want everybody to know that, like everyone says before, She's always been a smile on her face. She's always happy, no matter what the circumstances are. If it's just something that is so down, she's praying you up. Mm -hmm. So I just want everybody to know, it doesn't matter what you face. It doesn't matter what you see. Prayer. Amen. She left that with us. The foundation is prayer. No matter what, don't make your eyes fool you. Prayer is the key that she left with us. Amen. So Amen. Said those Amen. Amen. Hello, Brother Red.
ラーメン、紹介かっこいいで。<笑>
that Elder Delroy Swaby is here with us today. Thank God for you, Pastor Davis, Pastor Barack, Pastor, all of these wonderful people, amen, that are here. Mother Gloria Brooks and Mother Ruth Francis. Is Mother Francis here? She must be here. There she is. Right. They were like our three degrees. They would sit right here, right on the end is Mother Francis seat, then Mother Gwen seat, then Mother Gloria seat. And we thank God for them. One is now in glory. And the Lord has left two with us to take care of us until the Lord calls us home. And so we thank the Lord. Thank God for this church. Mother Gwen loved this church. In fact, the conversation she was having with Minister Neville the night that she passed, how was she going to get to church the next day? That was on her mind. And on Wednesday night, this past Wednesday night, we honored uh, Mother by hosting a service of uh, memory in her honor. And so all of us from Bethel Church had an opportunity then along with others to share. I am going to call uh, representative of our church now says the Helene Titus Glover to come. She will represent and speak for all of us as members of the Bethel Church. After that, amen, we're going to have uh, Miss Marie Daniels to come and read the eulogy. And then we will go and prepare for the word of the Lord. Sister. She would encourage us in our ministry, telling us what we did well and what we didn't do so well. But she would always tell us how we could improve. We'd call, call each other every other day. And on the 4th of January, I phoned Auntie Gwen as it was my turn to call. We were talking about our day and we were making arrangements for her to come around for dinner. There are times I still pick up the phone to call her and forget that I can no longer do that. My heart hurts, but I know she's in the best place. Good afternoon, family and friends. It is my privilege to read the eulogy of my cousin, Auntie. Friend, Gwendolyn Gloria. <coughs> Gwendolyn Gloria was born on the 20th, 26th of July, 1939, in industry, which is in Portland, Jamaica, to Melbourne and Vanessa Smith. Gwen was the second eldest of five. She is survived by sisters Muriel and Sadie and brother Stuart. <coughs> Her eldest brother, Walter, is now deceased. Gwen was a loving child, and everyone adored her. Gwen went to Rock Hall Primary School, and then went on to Mount Pleasant High School. After graduating from high school, Gwen went to Seamstress School, Seamstress School to become a dressmaker. Gwen's father wanted a better life for her, so he sent her to her eldest cousin in England, Radford. When Gwen arrived in Manchester, Radford showed her new, around her new home, making sure she knew where to put her things, her grip, also known as a suitcase, and, a, and her coat. He then went off to work, leaving her to get settled with her cousins in her new surroundings. Radford returned home from work to find Gwen was still in her coat. <laughs> he said, take off your coat. You know, sis, I hurt. Gwen replied, be cool. <laughs> As we all know, Manchester is well known for its cold weather. 
Gwen went straight off into work at the Walls factory and was known as a hard worker. Gwen was very family orientated. She had a young family of her own. Four children, Raymond, Sonia, Barbara, and Carol. Gwen had a close bond with her cousin, my dad, Redford, and his wife, Daphne. Even though she enjoyed life in Manchester, she was persuaded by her cousin Redford to make a fresh start in Bristol. But moved her young family to St Paul in Bristol and got a job at the Silverway petrol station at Sussex Place. She then went to work later on for National Express as a sales rep at the bus station. She was a very ambitious and tenacious woman. And eventually, she bought her own home in East Bay. always remained close with her family, here and abroad. She had an open door policy with everyone, and her gift was hospitality, providing a welcome, food, and comfort when you came to her home. Gwen and her daughter Carol were settled, were invited to Bethel Church. She felt at home immediately, and she was baptized soon after. Gwen was a loyal and active member within the church. She was a mentor to the younger generation, who was seen as a wise, and a powerful <coughs> prayer warrior within the church family. Gwen would always help anyone in need, inside or outside of the family. She brought her granddaughter, Bevine, and her niece, Dawn, to live with her. Her love knew no bounds. Gwen leaves behind her four children, 18 grandchildren, and 25 great grandchildren. Oh. Nieces and nephews, cousins, and a million friends. Gwen's oh. gift of hospitality, love, and her giving spirit will be carried on through the generations. Gwen was a truly remarkable woman. Thank you so much. We appreciate all that has been said and done on behalf of our dear mother. And we appreciate today your presence. We are blessed to have with us Bishop Stuart Smith. Bishop Smith is the presiding prelate of the Gospel Light Churches in Newark, New Jersey, and the brother of Mother Gwen. Now, of course, I knew Mother Gwen for years, and when I was in the States, I went to preach at Gospel Light, only to find out that he was Mother Gwen's brother. And from that time, I have called him Uncle Stewart. And we're delighted that he's here, and I fully understand. I have afforded him the opportunity to speak, but he wants to just be here as her brother, and I absolutely appreciate that. And so he spoke briefly on Wednesday evening, and we're glad uh, that he's here. But there are tributes that have come from the Gospel Light Church, and I just want to read just a couple of Bishop Smith and family. Uh, the Gospel Light Church and you and New Jersey family would love to encourage you to cast all your cares on him because he careth for you. We are praying for you and your family during this difficult time. We pray that God's arms with comfort and encourage you to hold fast unto his unchanging hands. That comes from the Gospel Light Church in Newark, New Jersey. And there are a number of cards that have come from both here across the seas and around the world. And of course, all that have come here today to celebrate. I mean, this church is full today. And uh, Mother Gwen was no bishop. <laughs> This would be a great crowd for a bishop. She was not a pastor. This would be a great crowd for a pastor. What was she? A helper, an encourager, 
which shows you that position does not bring popularity. But the greatest way to touch people's lives sometimes is to cook them a meal. Is to give them a pleasant word. To give them a smile. And she has touched so many lives. I ran into someone, um, I don't even know if they're here, but they uh, uh, were just sharing with me. They had seen her on the bus a couple of weeks before. And she took time to wait. She got off the bus and then waited for this person to come off the bus just to share a word with them. That's the kind of woman she was. And we're going to miss her. She was very, very good to my parents. Very, very good to all of us that were members of this church. Barbara has put herself in trouble. I mean serious trouble. Because she said that she got the cooking from her mother. So God know Barbara, we're gonna be lining up. Because one thing Mother Gwen could do, Lord have mercy. I mean she could cook. And so we will miss her dearly. But how many people know she is in the arms of the Lord? She is in the arms of the Lord, and we are delighted for that. Sister Nikki Filbert is coming to sing a song that Mother Gwen loved and requested by the family. Following Sister Nikki, I'm honored to invite to this pulpit the nephew, son of Bishop Smith, and the nephew of Mother Gwen, Elder Craig Smith who I've known for many, many years, he will come and share out of God's word for us. Because there is always a word from the Lord. And we encourage that word to be released in this house today. So following the singing of this great song, We Shall Be Holding, Elder Craig will come, amen. And we're preparing, not long from now, to join the family at the internment at Avonview Cemetery which is we are scheduled to be there at one o'clock. And so we're going to um, release you at that time and we will make our way to that system. Thank you. Thank you. 
good afternoon and God bless you everyone. Good to this word of God tonight and to or today to our angel of this house, Bishop Dexter Edmund, and to my father and bishop, Bishop Stuart Smith, to all the bishops and overseers, pastors, choir, saints, musicians, friends, and I believe I can say maybe about 80% of this house might be my family. you all in Jesus' name. Amen. I just found out that we own England. But God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. I've only been given a couple of minutes. Amen. And that is quite alright with me. But my aunt, and I have to say this is a privilege for me to eulogize her ongoing service. Amen, I've been here, this is my fourth time in England. Yes, I've been here at Bethel Church three times before, you may not remember me. I was the same height, just a little bit younger. Amen. <laughs> Amen, but I love my aunt to, to my heart. And I've listened to a lot of things from Wednesday night until today. And one thing about her, she was very tough. First time she brought me over, I never liked vegetables in my life. You can give me rice, you can give me chicken, any type of meat, give me bread if you want to. But I never liked vegetables. And she cooked vegetables. And I said, Auntie, I don't eat vegetables. She said, I don't care, you're gonna eat it tonight. <laughs> and I'll be very plain and honest with you, from the day I tasted her vegetables, cauliflower, I don't eat that stuff, and broccoli, until this day, I'm eating vegetables. <laughs> She was a mastermind in the kitchen. God blessed her hands, not only to feed people, but to bring people together. I thank God for my cousins. I thank God for my cousins. I thank God for my sister, my nieces, for my wife that's here with us. It's mixed emotions because we won't see her physically anymore. But we can celebrate because we know that she's with the Lord. I'm going to get into this word. And if you give me about 10 minutes, I'll be out your way. From the book of Mark, chapter 13. 32 and 33. And this is what fell into my spirit from we were here on Wednesday. But of that day and that hour, knoweth no man. Know not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed watch and pray for ye know not when the time is. Back in 2011, a radio host for family radio named Pastor Harold Camping tried to predict that Jesus was going to return on May 21st, 2011. Then when he, when that did not happen, he claimed he made a mistake and said it was going to happen five months later. On October 21st, 2011, but he was wrong again. Much to my surprise in doing research, I found that he predicted the Lord's coming a couple of times before that. 
back in 94, he predicted the Lord was coming. But the book of Matthew, chapter 25 and 13, tells us, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour, wherein the Son of Man cometh. For as we read this passage or passages of scripture today, when Jesus said that even he did not know the time of the end, he was affirming his humanity. For of course, God and the Father, Jesus and God are one. But no one knows when Jesus is going to return. He voluntarily gave up his unlimited use of his divine attributes. The emphasis of this verse is not that Jesus was lacking knowledge, but rather that the fact that no one knows, not the Son, not the angels in heaven, but the Father. It's God's prerogative whether to reveal the hidden thing or the secret things. No one can predict through scripture or through science the exact day of Jesus' return. But Jesus teaches us one thing. We have got to be prepared. For it is through preparation, not calculation, that is needed. What is preparation? Preparation is the act of preparing getting ready, planning, training, even studying with a goal in mind. We are all on a journey, this journey called life. And on this journey, we do a whole lot of planning. We plan for weddings, we plan for babies, we plan for career change. We even plan to purchase homes. And if you will, we even plan to prepare to deliver the word of the Lord. Most of the time, what we don't do much or put much effort in is planning for death. Planning for death. Now, if you will, for the next few minutes, I want to use for a subject, ready or not, here I come. Ready or not, here I come. Death is not a subject that we easily talk about. It seems one of the hardest things to conversate about. But the truth about death is it is permanent and it is imminent. So the scripture tells us no one knows. No man knows. Not the angels in heaven. Jesus said not even me but the Father. We have to understand it is his prerogative to download into us whether or not he wants us to know what he wants us to know. But the thing about God is he does not want us to know the day nor the hour. He does not want us to know why because we are on this journey and in this journey we must make preparation preparation because we have to understand although we live in this body we are not just earthly but we are spiritual we are spiritual beings living in an earthly body uh, why do we need to preparate or have preparation because you have to understand that this flesh can't go up when Jesus comes back this flesh can't go nowhere. The only place your flesh is going to go is six feet deep. After that, you're on your own. But you have to understand there's only two places that we can go. It's either heaven or hell. Now, I know we don't like to talk about hell, but hell is real. Heaven is real. And we have to understand. That's why I love my aunt, because 
we see within what has happened that she was not preparing, but she was ready. She was ready. She was ready. I want us to understand something about God because God has these attributes for a reason. Understand, he is omnipresent, he is omnipotent, and he's omniscient, meaning that he's everywhere at the same time. He knows all things and he has all power. Uh, if you will, uh, they taught us in systematic theology that we're taught about eternity and when it pertains to God, that he has no beginning and no end. He has no succession of moments in his own being and he sees time equally vividly. I want us to understand what does it mean to see time equally vividly. I want us all to understand this today. The God that we serve sees us equally vividly, meaning he sees your past, he sees your present, and he sees your future all at the same time. Mm. That's the God that we serve. He sees everything from your beginning unto your end. So he know when your end gonna come, but he wants you to be ready when the end comes. Would you just touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, don't you worry. Come on, y'all gonna help me today. Tell somebody, don't you worry. For death is not the end, but we have a hope. I hope sound man can help me just a little bit. We have a hope that makes us not ashamed. I want you to understand this is where we are right now because we have to understand death is no respecter of person. Death does not care what your status is. He does not care what your financial status is. He does not care what your age is. Death is no respecter of person. But I'm so glad this morning that we have a hope that maketh us not ashamed. Yeah. 
yeah, you guys go ahead and weep for me if you will. But I am not weeping no more. I am not feeling no sickness no more. Because I have a hope that makes me not ashamed. I wish you just holler hallelujah one time in this house. Understand why? Because Auntie Gwen understood that if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, she said, I got a building.
to the Avenue Cemetery where we will lay to rest the remains of our dear mother. After that, the family will meet us at the Rose Green Cricket Club. Please, we're asking you. Thirdly, there will be a retiring offering that the ushers will be receiving on your way out. And we will use this offering to be a blessing, amen, to the charity that has been a blessing to people. Let's stand everywhere. And as we go, we can be blessed. In the name of the Lord, just love our Jesus. Oh